Hi, I'm Dr. Paul, and I'm today very excited to show you a little bit about, a bit about my history and how my testing on myself, on my own experiment, has um, excited me because of the progress that I've made. And today I want to talk to you about heart rate variability and how it affects really overall health and also your fitness. And, um, you know, I read a recent study that showed that, you know, what we should have as goals shouldn't be a fear-based thing like I want to avoid cancer or whatnot. It should be a positive goal like I want to uh, be with my family. I don't want to. I don't. I want to be able to um, be active with my family and something positive that you can think of as a goal. I want to be stronger. I'm. Really, I want to be fitter. I want to help other people better. You know, when you have that goal, they've seen. They've shown that you actually are healthier when you have those more positive mindsets. And so, I want to encourage you to have a positive mindset every single day, but particularly also with your health goals, because does it really matter the name of the disease when you're healthy? I believe that cancer and all those diseases can go away if you start analyzing and take care of your health today. So today, let's talk about heart rate variability and, and how my measurements can help you. Um, this is the heart wizard right here. And these are all my data numbers from the last uh, nine years, basically, it's in from April 2010 to um, uh, my most recent measurements 2019, which didn't get recorded here. Um, and so I wanted to show you the, the data regarding that. Um, this is I put all the data in an Excel sheet and here's 2010 and here's my latest figures in 2019. And I'm measuring two things, my um, calendar versus my biological age and my fitness score. So let's go over my calendar and biological age. First of all, let's go over what heart rate variability is. Heart rate variability is, if you research it online, uh, just Google it, uh, they've shown it to be one of the greatest predictors um, of heart attacks and strokes um, based on using this measurement. And it's basically measuring uh, the distance between each heartbeat. So one heartbeat, one second heartbeat, third heartbeat, and the distance and variation. When you're younger, you tend to be more flexible. Well, your heart is a muscle and needs to be more flexible to be healthier. The stiffer it is, when you get older, you get stiffer generally. The worse your heart is and the more, uh, the greater mortality that you have in younger life. Uh, not younger life, but um, greater risk for dying earlier. So they found that when, when you have a, a good score with your heart rate variability, that you have a greater chance uh, for reducing heart attacks and strokes, increasing fitness. And that's why I wanted to go over these numbers with you. And I was excited because I hadn't used this in a long time and I want to start implementing it. Uh, I started measuring it again, and I, I've, now I can, I, for the first time, I've tracked it, and it's a nine-year tracking, basically, uh, using me as a guinea pig. And as you can see here, these numbers on the right is the average difference of my biological versus my chrono chronological age. And uh, my actual age is, you know, right here, based on my date, so 47 years old here. Today, I'm 56 years old. And here, my biological age is, um, older than it should be, which is not good. Here, on average, almost eight years older than, I, than my calendar age. 2012, maybe I was going through stress more than usual. Maybe I wasn't taking care of myself. I'd have to look back on my journaling and see. And, and here in 2014, okay, so these are all, the ones that are colored are grouped together because they're measured around the same time. The clear, the white ones, they are measured alone. So there's no averaging here, but it, as you can see, overall, how I started from six, the average 7.8 here, nine, 7.6, 8.2, 8.26. Here I started a program called Science-Based Nutrition. And, and as you can see today, my average is about 4.4 years older versus seven to nine, um, you know, at, at one point, you know, I've, I've, I've increased my, accelerated anti-aging uh, close to five years, which is exciting to me because it's working. And so um, I've been doing functional nutrition chiropractic for, you know, for th almost 30 years. And I've been doing holistic nutrition and uh, functional medicine for now seven years, or, I'm sorry, almost 10 years. And and right about th at about this time that I started really going full board on functional nutrition and assessing uh, people from using muscle testing, um, applied kinesiology, and then getting more into uh, uh, also scientific measurements using blood work. And 
in 2017, about five years prior to, I'm sorry, five months prior to this, I actually began a program that I was excited about. It's called Science-Based Nutrition, which assesses uh, more factors besides blood. I use hair heavy metal testing and urine heavy metal testing, which assesses you know almost a hundred different types of uh, actually not a hundred but the urine tests a, a series of uh, heavy metals and the hair tests is a series of essential minerals and metals and um, I started doing that program and and I've improved greatly now when let's go to the fitness level here I uh, you know let's go back so I, I, I improved about five years on average with my um, aging with my fitness scores, I was the worst in 2012. Um, as you can see here, my fitness score here, it's my most recent one is in the green, so that's better. Even though I'm not a, an athlete or anything like that, I wanted to be at least in the green. But when I look at my older score here in 2012, it was, I'll show you that it, it was pretty bad. So here's the fitness test here, and there's three data sets here, one from 2012 here, and you can see I measured two times, and you can see it's low, it's 2.6, and that's how I came up with this measurement here. It was in the green, but also notice that in prior to two years till now, uh, two years ago till now, it went lower too. And I want to show you what I did differently in the beginning of this year. It's called a four-minute workout. And I love it because we're all busy and I don't want to spend an hour at the gym, honestly. And the other point that's really important is that I, I haven't focused on fitness for such a long time because I'm just active in general. I don't go to the gym. And notice how my aging got better because I changed my nutrition. Nutrition definitely trumps uh, going to the gym. Now, is it important to be active? Oh, absolutely. I was, I've been active. You know, you don't want to sit around a, like a couch potato. but do you really need to exercise 60 to 90 minutes every single day? Well, if you want to buff out and be a, a bodybuilder like Arnold Schwarzenegger, then you're going to have to work out two hours a day. If you're an athlete, you're going to have to do that kind of stuff. I'm an athlete of life. You are an athlete of life, most likely. What are you going to do? The thing that works. What What's the thing that works for me? A four-minute exercise every day. So watch the video down below. I want to encourage you to focus on your positive health things that you want to have goals with with your family, if you want to do vacations, if you want to, you know, eventually uh, just enjoy a living uh, next to a lake, whatever it is that's positive, focus on that. Number two, focus number two on nutrition. Number three, focus in on your fitness. These numbers are good, you know, and, and you want to find out those scientific measurements that have no relationship to symptoms whatsoever because I have several patients that have a high pain threshold and they come in here and um, they're almost sometimes dying and, and they have no symptoms and that's a tr truth right with cancer with heart disease you don't even know that you have symptoms until boom you have stage 4 cancer or boom you die of a heart attack there are several instances of people that have gone through that unfortunately my job is to assess my health before it turns into a problem. Assess my patient's health before it turns into a major disease later on. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Watch the four-minute video down below. God bless you.